The Russian army is preparing an offensive on Heliopol in the Zaporizhia region. At the same time, the Ukrainians may counterattack in the fall. Bild reports this, citing sources. As a veteran of the Ukrainian armed forces, who maintains contact with the fighters on the front line, told the publication, the Russian armed forces are currently concentrating near the occupied city of Polohy in order to advance from there to Guliapol. The Russians are now preparing an offensive in the Zaporizhia region and are moving troops to Polohy to strike in the direction of Heliopol. Heliopol is an important strategic and logistical point for the Ukrainians. If the Russians take it, Ukraine will find itself under massive pressure in the Zaporizhia region, the veteran said. Another source in Western military circles reported that shortly before the NATO summit in Washington, the alliance's allies were informed by Kiev about the Ukrainian mobilization plan, which could lead to local counterattacks starting in the fall. According to Bild, new brigades are already being formed in the Ukrainian armed forces for this purpose, damaged units are being rotated, and losses are being compensated. The West believes that the Russian military could be overwhelmed in the coming months, which could lead to a new turn on the battlefield. At the same time, a source in Kiev reported that recruitment is proceeding slowly at the moment. In a recent interview with the BBC, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said that the hot phase of the war with Russia could end this year. The Ukrainian leader admits that the war will end diplomatically, not militarily. This does not mean that all territories are recaptured by force. I think that the power of diplomacy can help, the president emphasized. He said the entire world must put pressure on Russia to persuade it to sit down at the negotiating table to end the war. Ukraine clears sky for F-16s due to systematic work Russian air defense weakens. Ukrainian military expert Serhii Zaguretz said that a systematic and consistent work to weaken the Russian air defense system is underway. He said this on the Espresso TV channel. General Sirsky said that the S-300 system in the Donetsk region was destroyed. Later, the advisor to the mayor of Mariupol said that this complex was destroyed near Manhush. The point is that the enemy is using these systems to cover its facilities and hit our facilities in ground-to-ground -ground mode. Sirsky says that over a certain period of time, about 20 complexes and about 15 enemy radar stations were destroyed. This indicates that the Ukrainian side is systematically disabling enemy air defense systems. This may also be related to preparations for the use of aircraft in the future, i.e. to clear the sky for F-16s, explained Zguretz. According to the military expert, there is a systematic and consistent effort to weaken the Russian air defense system. On July the 12th, there was also information that an enemy S-300V system was destroyed at the airport in Mariupol. In particular, the radar stations of this complex were damaged and destroyed, notes Zaguretz. Recall at midnight on July the 16th, units of the missile troops of the Ukrainian armed forces, together with other components of the defense forces, struck at Russia's S-300 system in the temporarily occupied Donetsk region. Ukrainian troops continue to strike at Russian air defense systems in the temporarily occupied territories and in the border areas of Russia to create conditions for the deployment of F-16 fighters after their expected arrival in Ukraine in the summer and fall of 2024. The head of the Servant of the People faction, member of the Committee on National Security, Defense and Intelligence of Ukraine, David Arakamia, stated that the partners promised to provide Ukraine with more F-16 aircraft than they trained pilots. The MP said on the national telethon that Belgium, the Netherlands, Denmark and other allies have already promised twice as many aircraft as Ukraine has trained pilots and engineers to service Western aviation. Commenting on the insufficiently fast pace of aircraft deliveries, he noted that this should be treated with understanding because these are still record-breaking deadlines. According to him, in non-war times, the delivery times for aircraft are always five to six years and now in the case of Ukraine, we are talking about one year.